So for the next topic, which is jump distance, we're going to go to, at Wu we don't use whiteboards, we use sandboards. They're a little <laughs> bit more practical. Anyways, you're riding along through the water and this is kind of your, your trajectory through the water. So imagine we're at the beach here, the wind is blowing this way and here you're taking off. And when you take off, you start flying downwind and at one point you land and if you do, do a transition, you go this way. If you do a regular jump, you go that way. So the GPS in a phone and actually every GPS only measures in certain time increments. The Wu measures data more than 100 times per second, up to 8,000 times per second. So we have almost a continuous line of data points. Um, with the GPS, it's more like measurements per second. So the GPS points will kind of distribute along your jump. Um, let's say you do a regular jump, no transition. And we'll put some more up front as well. So this is kind of like your whole trajectory. Approach track, jump to track, trajectory and landing path. One important thing to note is for the jump distance measurement, we basically take the, dif the distance between the last point before takeoff and the last point before landing. We obviously would love to say we take the next point after the landing because then we get more distance, but we can't do this because very often here the board gets underwater. And if that happens, the GPS signal gets distorted and it may come out here. And so, no, it really, it really does. Yeah. So, um, so we can't do this. What we do though, is we take the last velocity we have at this point. We know, okay, at this point, we're still 0.6 seconds away from, from the landing. Mm -hmm. So we add the velocity at this point, which is meters per second times, in this case, 0.6 seconds. So we add a little bit of distance here yep. to the landing point, which is based on the velocity of that last point. So with that, we get a very accurate kind of estimation of this jump distance overall. Okay. Now, two more interesting things here to see. So, so if you send the kite too much, um, you will go back to where you came from. Again, here we have the wind direction and you will go back to where you came from. If you don't send the kite enough, you will just keep floating into the direction that you, that you were going. And so you kind of keep floating that way. It's essentially wasted energy that you could have used to get up. It's kinetic energy in this direction that we ultimately want to convert in upwards. And here we don't do enough of that.